I just got through watching uh, Ed Endem's latest video. I usually don't respond to his videos because it's you know it's beneath my dignity to deal in uh, you know that environment, that cesspool. Um, but you know, I guess I've got him on one of his better days when he's feeling a little bit less scatological, uh, and he raised some good points. So I'll condescend to uh, respond to him. Um, First of all, though, I'd like to sort of talk about uh, a question that uh, Glynos asked me. Um, Glynos, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know, at endum deliberately uh, mispronounces my name, but I'm not deliberately mispronouncing yours. Maybe it's just whatever you care to pronounce it as. Um, Linus, you said the motivation is still ultimately the same, isn't it? In other words, for me doing something that's very uncomfortable that I still enjoy doing. You probably wouldn't do your bike riding if it didn't bring with it pleasures that you deem are worth the sacrifice. Now that is a very interesting statement. Um, first of all, I think that when you talk about pleasure, um, you're going to have to sort of tighten up that word a bit. You're going to have to, uh, you know, tell me what you mean by pleasure, because pleasure and utility, or pleasure and satisfaction, or pleasure and, um, whatever you want to call it, um, gratification, are not necessarily the same thing. Um, it's, uh, you know, any, anybody who studied Epicurus will tell you that there's a big difference between those two. Um, but there's no real overt pleasure, as I define the term, in riding a bicycle. Um, the only thing that I might find I would advise that is pleasurable, I suppose, is the occasional feeling of the wind, you know, going over your head when it's particularly hot out and, you know, it cools you off a bit. The rest of it really isn't very pleasurable at all. I have repetitive strain injury, as I've told everybody, and gripping the handlebars gets annoying after a while, but I put up with it. Um, I, uh, nethers get tired because I have a prehistoric bicycle that I refuse to part with and uh, there's no suspension or anything on it. And when you ride a bike like that for three hours, one of those upright bikes too, so all the weight is falling right on your butt, um, it's not comfortable and I'm considerable weight, 200 pounds. Um, back gets tired and sore, uh, that kind of thing. Um, you get out of breath, uh, you know, there's no, there's not a great amount of pleasure involved in that, but what is it that's happening to me when I see, say, the way that the wind is blowing in the trees, the leaves, um, and it enchants me in some way? Um, Ed Endem actually said that, yeah, he understands that, you know, his coffee and a cigarette thing, so... Um, yeah, okay, you, you get that, right? There's a difference between eating a chocolate bar and an atavistic joy or atavistic feeling of satisfaction, whatever you want to call that, that moment where, ah, you know, this is, this is it. Uh, I wouldn't put that in the same category as an orgasm or um, getting a massage or eating something delicious or having sex. Uh, although, you know, there is some, at least atavism, if you, there's an em emotional investment in the sexual act, and, you know, that's makes it that much better, and everybody will tell you that. Um, how would you describe love as a pleasure? Um, some people will say, no, no, we're programmed to love in order to procreate. Rubbish, I don't believe that. That's God talk. That's exactly what Evendum brought up uh, a couple of days ago in Pyro's room, um, that there's something up there that's programming everything to do something, or something in everything that's programming something to do... Uh, uh, no, I, I don't... Uh, that's all rubbish. Um, again, that's religion sneaking into atheism. There's nothing programming anything. It's all just a bunch of animals growing, breeding, eating, dying. End of story. There's no teleology, no purpose, no function, nothing. There's no programming going on. We don't breed for any reason at all. <laughs> There's no reason. We're not being pushed by a selfish gene to do anything. Um, it's not even nature as some sort of thing selecting us to do this. I don't know where... Well, I, I think I do know where people get that idea. It's a hangover, as Nietzsche said, from Christianity. 
um, where you know we just thought that there was some fundamental principle behind everything, and people cannot be disabused of that because, well, they, they can throw people into a state of existential panic if they end up like that. So, you know, there there are differences in the means by which we gain satisfaction. There are levels of satisfaction. I would call something that is non-physical and um, you know, sort of more cerebral or emotional or, you know, just not something you can pin down like, you know, appealing directly to one of the five senses. Sense gratification is not the same thing, for example, as joy is. Uh, one could say that they're both pleasures if you want to put them all under that rubric, yes. But I would say that it's kind of a misidentification to say that, you know, pleasure is pleasure and that's it. No, there are types, levels, etc. of pleasure. Um, and the pleasure, if you want to call it that, that I get from riding my bike is utterly different, say, than one would get from, or at least in a purely physical way, from an orgasm. Um, it's a peak experience, whereas bicycling is more of a plateau experience for me. Although I have bad days when I'm bicycling, like if the wind is right in my face or if it starts raining or you know, uh, there's a lot of noise or something like that, or especially if somebody acts in a hostile manner while I'm out bicycling, you know, that can wreck your day. But, you know, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff isn't physical, but, you know, it, it is, sometimes it is physical. Like, you know, I get cold or wet or something, you know, I don't want to do that. But um, a lot of the utility I get from that has zero to do with comfort and if anything if I was looking at this from the point of view of comfort I presume you mean physical comfort if not then okay then we're talking at cross purposes here um, I'm willing to uh, deal with the negatives the discomfort the physical problems that or physical complications or physical discomforts because something else is wrapped up in the entire experience. I will disregard um, the, uh, the sore butt uh, because of the wow feeling I get. You know, sort of the equivalent, I guess, of beholding a great work of art. Um, reading a bit of poetry, whatever. It's a, it's a state that doesn't have anything to do with physical pleasure at all. Um, and as Ed Endem says, you can actually um, work on that. You can cultivate that capacity to do that. Uh, it takes practice, but it can be done. Uh, a lot of people emerge from depression having that in their psychotherapy. Um, now, one could also say that there are not so nice um, reasons for pleasure or for getting off on things. Um, for example, I'm, I'm surprised that Nietzsche didn't bring up this little anecdote, but because he always was bringing up stuff from the ancient Greeks and Romans. Uh, we've all seen the movie um, 300. Well, after the Battle of Plataea, which was when um, the, the Spartans and the rest of the Greeks eventually defeated the Persians, they overran the Persian camp and the Persian um, general's camp was, you know, luxurious, full of concubines and lovely foods and all this kind of thing for his victory celebration. Um, well, the, um, the Spartan king um, looked at all this and said, no, all the slaves can have that. We, we don't want that. We're Spartans. What we want is just this victory. That's what we want. We want to know that we were the ones who smashed the Persians beyond recovery. Um, that's not necessarily nice, is it? That's more along the lines of the will to power. Uh, Nietzsche's idea that, no, no, we want, we want that kind of thing. Now, I don't think anyone would deny that we have that in us. What people will do is they'll say, well, that's not a nice thing. It's not a nice aspect of our uh, makeup. Maybe not, but it's there. And we do gain utility from it. We do gain utility from being better than everybody else, whether we like it or not. That is obviously taking place here on YouTube in this debating circle. We want to win. <laughs> now you say, well, that's ego gratification. So? 
then you're going to have to tell me that ego gratification is not something that uh, that that actually feels good. Because that's I'm not arguing that whether or not that's a good feel good or it's moral or anything. Um, I'm not saying that uh, that um, that it's good that I feel great about lording it over other people or killing them or smashing them up uh, the way the Spartans smashed the Persians. Um, but what I'm saying is they prefer that over the sense gratification that. Um, they could have found in Mardonius's tent. Mardonius was the Persian general, but they rejected it. They gave that to their slaves, to the Helots. Um, they wanted the glory. They wanted to march before their fellow Greeks saying, we are the ones who defeated the Persians. Um, puny? Ego-driven? Yes. Um, that does not alter the fact that there is enormous satisfaction to be had in that. <laughs> And the Spartans built their entire civilization on that. Glory and power. That's what we want. And we will get it. And they got it. Um, but, you know, Nietzsche dealt with all that in his in his works about the Spartans and why they behaved the way that they did, because they just said that power is far more gratifying than pleasure. Um, now, one could say that um, that the satisfaction one gets from having power is pleasure. Maybe I would say that it's uh, in the hierarchy. It's slightly above the gross physical pleasures. Um, again, I would I would advise somebody to take up, say, uh, or to look in Indian philosophy concerning the various levels of pleasure. There's uh, pleasures that we can all have, like we all have access to chocolate. But there's other things that we don't all have access to because, by their very nature, they're limiting. Uh, not everybody can be the winner. Not everybody can be the politician who gets elected. Not everybody can be a movie star. We have to have non-stars in order for there to be movie stars. But whether or not I get utility out of eating a chocolate bar is not contingent upon whether or not anybody else has a chocolate bar. Um, so there are levels of these things. It's not just pleasure. So we're going to have to tighten that up. We're going to have to decide what we mean by pleasure. Because you know, if we're going to say any kind of satisfaction at all is pleasure, that's fine then. The will to power is pleasure, then. That's fine. Um, then I think I can actually start dealing with Benatar on uh, the terms that other people might want me to. Um, now, um, the other point that came up when Ed Endem made his video was um, he sort of backed off a bit from what he previously said. Uh, he said that Homer Simpson is not what I'm advocating. He says Homer Simpson is what we are. Maybe. But I'm not Homer Simpson. Given the choice between loafing on the couch and drinking beer, or going out and causing myself some pain in a, on, a, on my bicycle, I will choose the bicycle ride. Um, but I don't deny the fact that, you know, you go to Walmart and you look and see all the people there, and you, you get a definite Homer Simpson vibe from them, don't you? Or from a lot of them. Well... That's the difference, I guess, between uh, people who are in the Matrix and don't know it and people who are in the Matrix and do know it. Um, it's, uh, it's an interesting comment on, um, on uh, Nietzsche's idea of the herd and the Übermensch, or just the herd and the non-herd, the person who's risen above the herd. The herd is satisfied with McDonald's and Walmart and uh, uh, KFC and with uh, you know fish and chips and a uh, pint of bitter after work and uh, you know this kind of thing um, game of darts uh, that's th that's all the pleasures that the herd likes that's the helots who want the contents of Mardonius's tent when they s destroy the Persian camp at the Battle of Plataea that's what they want what about the Spartans who are they who say pleasures pff, slave you, you, you get that. We don't want it. We won the battle, so we're kind of entitled to this. No, we don't want it. You, you want to get drunk, you go ahead and get drunk. We're not, we're not touching that. That is a disgusting thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's very Nietzschean, actually, <laughs> the, the, the Spartan attitude. Um, what we want is power and glory. Um, not everybody can have those things, and that's what makes them that much more valuable than Homer Simpson's stuff. Although Homer Simpson is kind of, you know, he in his lame way, he likes to think that he's a great guy, he wants to be the president of the United States, and I am so smart, SMRT, and all that kind of thing, but, um, you know, he's he's basically just a consumer in the 
basest sense of the word. He consumes duff beer and hoagies and stuff that's pumped out, you know, at the Quickie Mart or at, uh, you know, the grocery store he goes to. But some of us are not satisfied with that. Some of us want something else. Again, the herd versus those who have risen above the herd, or perhaps those who are simply, in some sense that they understand and in a way agree with, are excluded from the herd. They either have been banished from it or they have seceded from it. Um, in most, I would say, brainy type people, nerdish people who are likely to discuss philosophy on the internet, it's a combination of both. In my early life, I was excluded. It didn't have the desired effect. It sort of made people think that I had some enormous power when I didn't care that I got excluded. Now I kind of exclude myself. I see what other people are doing and it looks rather puny, you know. Um, I have a tiny house, but it doesn't seem no, anywhere near as puny as when I go to one of these new subdivisions that are springing up everywhere where every house is absolutely identical and they all cost ten times as much as mine does. Uh, to me, those houses are puny, whereas mine is you know, there's some sort of originality about it. Um, I'm, I'm rather pleased with it, even though I have to make videos in my laundry room. So, <laughs> uh, the satisfaction is there. Maybe humans are, generally speaking, Homer Simpsons. Maybe they generally are consumers who need that big illusion. Um, they need to be in Plato's cave in one form or another. Uh, they need to escape discomfort. Life is something that they expect to come from them, to come to them, and when bad things come to them, they push them away. When good things come to them, they accept them. There are other people who go out and seek things, uh, who look beyond what the common run of humanity is satisfied by. Um, I think everybody who reads Nietzsche sort of thinks, oh yeah, I'm not in the herd, you know, but if you're in the herd, you wouldn't bother to read Nietzsche anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, that philosophy would only appeal to a very narrow segment of our society. Appeals to me, that just proof, of, you know, what an eccentric I am. Um, so yeah, so you know, the the thing is, we've got a, you know, two, two main issues here. We've got to tighten up our, our language on what we mean by pleasure because there are huge levels of pleasure, differences, and we've got to decide um, whether or not we accept the fact that our civilization or our species is not a unified thing, that we don't all want the same thing. We don't all get the same levels of satisfaction. Um, you know, the, the Helot, the, the Spartan's slave, just can't wait to dig into those suites and get drunk and... Uh, you know, maybe have his way with a couple of the eunuchs or with, uh, you know, some of the dancing girls that he found in the Persian's tent. But the Spartans, the actual warrior class themselves, that's just puny stuff. I don't want that. What I want is much bigger, and these slaves wouldn't even understand it anyway. Just give them the stupid things that they want. Us, people who are not in the herd, we, and I'm not saying me, I'm saying this is the way the Spartans would see it, we want something better, something far more satisfying in a more deeply fundamental sense. We want people to talk about us and remember our names 2,500 years from now. I don't think that that desire is the same thing as eating a bacon double cheeseburger washed down with a non-diet Coke. 